Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Porter County Perspective. This week I'll be speaking with Madison Carey, a Chesterton High School student, about a new club at CHS which she started. The club is called Hope. Thanks for meeting with me today, Maddie. Thank you. Starting off, can you tell me a little about yourself? Well, just the basics. My name's Maddie and I'm a junior at CHS. I don't know, I'm pretty, pretty average. Uh, I like hanging out with my friends and listening to music. Yeah, that's about it. Could you tell us a little bit about the club that you started and what it stands for? Well, I started a club called Hope and I first had the idea of starting Hope like uh, sometime my sophomore year. The summer before sophomore year um, in July of 2019, I was sexually assaulted and it was the worst experience of my life. If it wasn't that exact experience, it was everything that happened after it. It was like if you took my world and then completely shattered it into a million pieces and I was left to pick it up. So I had to talk to some pretty scary people about it. Like I had to talk to not only my parents and, you know, the school, but I also had to talk to like DCFS and the police, which was not a very calm experience. But when I got back to school, the person that did this to me, I go to school with them. So I saw them every single day and I walked in the hallways and I was so afraid constantly. I had like, I had panic attacks every other day and it was the first time I actually had ever experienced a panic attack. And it was not an enjoyable thing that I wish upon literally anybody, but I struggled a lot with being in school and being by myself. I didn't really get a lot of support from other people, definitely not at school. I was called psycho and liar when words started getting out about it. I lost a lot of friends, but I was thinking to myself, I was like, if I feel this way, one, there has to be someone else who feels this. And I never, ever, ever want anyone to feel this way. So I thought, why don't we have more resources available for people who have been sexually assaulted? You know, why don't we have more of a system at CHS set in place for people who come forward and say that something like this happens to them. Because if you see in the hallways, like there's so many posters for suicide prevention and that's phenomenal. Like that's so awesome that we have those resources available, but there's nothing if you're sexually assaulted. And when you come forward to the school, there's, they can't like, they don't do much for you except like, sorry about it. So I talked to my guidance counselor and I was like, what if we started something here? I talked to Mrs. Moffat and I was like, what if we did something what if we made a change? And she was so excited to get on board and help. And um, after quite a few months of me thinking like, what is it gonna be? Like, what am I gonna do with this? I came up with the name for it. And it took, I don't know, it, it took some thought I'd say, but one day it just kind of all clicked in my head, hope, you know? Cause I was like, well, what do I want this to do? I was, what do I want this whole thing to do? And I was like, I wanted to raise awareness. I wanted to help other people. And I wanted to create hope. And then I was like, that's it. Like a thousand light bulbs went like went off in my head and I grabbed my pen and my paper and I started writing it down and it all just like came out. But hope stands for heal, overcome, persevere and empower. And a little bit about what that means is my thought process was after you've been assaulted, you like you have to heal from that. And in healing others, you heal yourself. And I'm a firm believer of that but also overcoming and perseverance because while I was actually looking up the Google definition of overcome and it says you have like overcoming the enemy. And I was like, yes, that was overcoming the enemy and perseverance. I mean, for me, it's been a year and a half, but there are still like days where I can't breathe or where I have nightmares that I'm back in that situation. Or like, I can't even look at myself in the mirror because I see what that person saw. And the last one in power is probably the most important part of hope, in my opinion, because for empowering and empowerment, you don't have to feel that exact pain to empower another person. You know, if someone were to come to me and be like, you know what, I believe you and I'm going to help you instead of being like, well, you're a psycho liar. Things might have been a little bit different, you know. So I think E is really important for everybody at the school, too, that they can get involved with hope. And then 
what I once hoped to be, I put on the flyers, like our mission statement. And so um, Hope is a club for survivors of sexual assaults. And our mission is to create hope for survivors of sexual assault by empowering each other to heal, overcome, and persevere in a supportive environment. Who all is welcome to join Hope? Obviously, like I said, survivors of sexual assault. And that is like and everyone and anyone, girl, guy, non-binary, it doesn't matter you have a place at Hope. But I also want to kind of extend that invitation to allies, you know, people who might not experience that exact pain, but they're like, I want to empower you. I want to be that E of Hope. The first meeting of Hope was on November 10th. How did that go? So actually no one came to the first meeting, but I'm not, I'm like not too sad about it because I know that that seed has been planted and I know that we can only go up from here. And with within the next couple of weeks, I want to start putting, you know, more posters out, getting the word out about it, you know, a little bit more and just making sure people know that there's a place for them. When will Hope be meeting next? So our next meeting for Hope will be on December 8th. How often is someone sexually assaulted in America? Every 73 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted. Can you share with us some more statistics concerning sexual assault in America? Yes, yeah, some one of them that's probably the most concerning in my mind is that every nine minutes that victim is a child. And in 99% of all sexual assault cases, the perpetrators walk away untouched. What about statistics specifically about Indiana? Um, I found some statistics on a website that said more than 17% of all girls in Indiana from grades 9 to 12 have reported being raped, and one in every 71 men in Indiana have been raped. Furthermore, of those men, I read that more than a quarter of those men reported that their first rape was at the age of 10 or younger. Um, I found some more specifically about, you know, high school students, and that it says that one in five Hoosier women have been sexually assaulted and that Indiana ranks the fourth highest in the nation for the number of reported rapes among high school girls. And I think one of the biggest problems in in Indiana is that we have no legal definition of consent. Who is particularly at risk for sexual assault? Younger people, um, definitely. And younger people would be considered under the age of 30. But women are at the highest risk overall. And one in three women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. And one in five women will be raped. Can men also be victims of sexual assault? Yes, men are most definitely victims too. In fact, one out of every 10 rape victims are male. How often does the victim of sexual assault know their attacker? So I read that more than 90% of rape and sexual assault victims know their attacker. And I also found that 93% of juvenile victims know their attacker. What are some of the long-term effects of being sexually assaulted? Some of the most common are depression, flashbacks, PTSD, panic attacks, eating disorders, substance abuse, and suicide. What are some of the best ways to prevent sexual assault? This one I kind of struggle with because I feel like in certain cases you can't you can't get out, but there are things to do to kind of keep yourself a little safer. Definitely a big one is alcohol safety. You know, things like know where you're getting your drinks from, never put your drink down, don't just take a drink from somebody random. I would say definitely trust your gut. Definitely, definitely trust your gut. And then vacation safety, or if you're going to a new area that you don't know much about. Definitely like look stuff up before you get there. Always be aware of your surroundings, no matter where you are, what you're doing. Be aware of your surroundings and who's around you and always have a plan B. Always have a way out or somewhere you can go to be safe. What are some of the stigmas that exist surrounding sexual assault? I think one of the biggest ones is that it only happens to women, which is beyond false. Um, Another one is that not saying no equals consent. And that's not the case at all. I actually found this quote that says it perfectly. And it says that consent is not the absence of a no, but it is the presence of an informed and freely given yes. Um, Another one is that penetration is the only form of sexual assault. And it's not. Forced sexual activity of any kind is sexual assault. And then the second biggest one next to that, it only happens to women. And something that I have a very personal issue with is 
someone asking for it and you are never ever ever asking for it i do not care what you're wearing like what you look like what you how you're dancing what your job is how your body looks none of that means that you're asking for it in any way what can i personally do to help prevent sexual assault I definitely think that you could be, you know, like I said, alert and aware of your surroundings, you know, kind of watch out for yourself and watch out for other people around you. Something that like, I know people have like kind of helped me out with is like being like, oh, does she have a ride? Is she by herself? You know, so just kind of keeping your eye out for people around you that might just be standing alone by themselves in a compromisable situation. If a sexual assault survivor wishes to pursue legal action against their assaulter, how could he or she report it? Calling 911 if you're in immediate danger, um, that's a number one. Contacting your local police department or going to a medical center. Does sexual assault often go unreported and if so, why? Yes, it most definitely does go unreported. Um, In fact, three out of every four cases goes unreported. And I think a lot of that has to do with the he said, she said. A lot of fear involved in speaking up or speaking out against a certain person. And definitely, you know, just a corrupt system that does little to nothing. And um, similarly to the statistic that I stated earlier, out of every 1,000 sexual assaults, 995 perpetrators will walk free. Besides joining Hope, can you tell our listeners about some other resources available to help sexual assault survivors heal? Definitely something that I know that helped me a lot was counseling, uh, meditation, prayer. As far as like resources available to you, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it is a organization called RAIN and it stands for the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network, but it's the largest nonprofit anti-sexual assault organization. And they actually founded and currently operate the National Sexual Assault Hotline, but they have so many resources on their website that I could not even begin to list off. How can we best support our friends and family members who come forward as sexual assault survivors? One of the biggest things is I believe you. It's not your fault and you're not alone. Definitely being that support system, you want to stay far, far away from any judgment whatsoever and definitely not telling other people because when a victim and when a survivor is ready to come forward and talk about what happened to them, that should be their decision, not random people they've never even met before coming up to them, asking them, oh, hey, did this happen to you? You know, in their own time. If listeners wanted to check out more statistics or do their own research about sexual assault, can you refer them to any websites that would be helpful? Definitely, as I stated before, RAIN is a really good one. Womenforchangeindiana.org. And then I found another one that is nsvrc.org, which is the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. Is there anything else you wanted to share with listeners about either the new CHS Club Hope or about sexual assault in the United States? Definitely something that if I could leave with anyone, it would be the National Sexual Assault Hotline. It's 1-800-656-4673. And I'll just say it one more time, but it's 1-800-656-4673. And I think that's a really important phone number that more people need to know about. And then something about hope at CHS. I just want people to know that there is always hope. You know, in every situation, there's always hope. All right, that's it for this week's edition of Porter County Perspectives. My guest today was Chesterton High School's own Madison Carey, who started the Hope Club. Thank you again for joining us, Maddie. Thank you.